We are live from Hackensack Meridian Health, stage 17 for another Up Close and Country in New York City. I'm Katie Neal from Nash FM 94.7. If you are watching on Facebook Live, thanks for tuning in today. If you're here in our live studio audience, thank you for calling in sick to work. We'll try to keep you off of the camera so nobody gets in trouble today. Thank you to our friends at Sparkling Ice, Fruity Flavorful Sparkling Water. We've got a great show for you today. Our next artist for Up Close and Country, anyone who says his name, they will tell you, keep your eye on that guy because great things are going to happen for him. He's got one of the hottest songs of the summer. Please give a Nash Nation welcome to Mitchell Tenpenny. <laughs> How y'all doing? Good. These chairs kind of run off on you. Start spinning around. All right, well, hey everybody. My name is Mitchell Tenpenny from Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, this city's really big. It kind of scares us. But we're having a good time. We've actually uh, gotten to be in New York City the past two weeks. So it's been a lot of fun. This first song I wrote my buddy Devin Dawson. Um, back before either one of us were out traveling the country doing this full time. And I remember we were just kind of talking about uh, that first car or truck you get where, uh, you know, it might be a piece of junk, but you still think you're king in the world and you get to drive, get away from mom and dad, get in a little trouble. And so we wrote a song about that and it's called Truck I Drove in High School. Gold old 
truck I drove in high school. Thank you. So uh, this next song, I was sitting at a bar in Nashville called Losers. Anybody been to Nashville in here ever? A couple of y'all? All right. Well, uh, Losers is like a place. So in Nashville, we write songs from like 11 o'clock, sometimes at 3 o'clock, somewhere around there. And then you get off, and Nashville's traffic's gotten really bad, so you just tend to go to the bars to kill time. And uh, I was sitting there one day with my buddy from Walker McGuire, Jordan Walker, and we, we saw this girl sitting in the side by herself and uh, on her booth, like as cliche as it is, sitting by herself in a corner booth. And she kept looking at her cell phone, and she'd put it down and rip a shot of vodka. And, uh, or tequila, it looked like vodka, but for the sake of the song, we went with vodka. But uh, I could tell she was dealing with a heartbreak, she was dealing with something, and we wanted to write a song about that. And the next day we went to the room, and I remember coming up with ideas, and we came up with a song called Mixed Drinks. up another one cause who's counting anyway won't stop till the job is done she's gotta forget his name every sip on her lips is going down so smooth tears falling off her face bartender knows better than to cut her off and see his job and fix heartbreak she don't need one light the taste But she's throwing them back Raising the glass Say goodbye to the past So her girl Living her mind So many times They don't move on With a little less soda Knows it ain't right But just for tonight It's gonna be her way in the land She has mixed feelings About her drinking Mixed drinks about her feeling Yep, yep Oh Yep, yep Well, every time her phone lights up She pretends she doesn't see She don't even need to love She knows who's on the screen They say drunk in my Sober heart when it's torn apart, cause he went too far. Lord knows she must be hurting. She has unsettled. Thank 
cool. I think we got time for one more real quick before uh, you go to a break. Um, this song. Hold on. I apologize. Hold on. I wrote this song, my buddy Dallas Wilson, and uh, you know, we were. I remember going in the writing room that day and just kind of talking about that girl that kind of finally makes a man open up. You know, guys try to play tough all the time, and uh, but we know who runs the world in the house, especially. And you know, it's that one girl where you can finally just let loose and. Um, we ended up putting it on our new record that's coming out, which I'm so excited to get out because we've had an EP out for so long. But now we get to put out new songs, and I'm just I'm itching to get it out. So it's done. We're ready to do it. We just got to go through all the proper steps, and it's going to come soon. So this song is going to be on that record, and uh, I'd like to play it for you. Hold on one sec. Girl, 
you got me telling all my secrets Oh, telling all my secrets to you Thank you guys Hackensack Meridian Health Stage 17 Give it up one more time for Mitchell 10 Penny Thank y'all Dude, you sound great. Thank you oh, so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. I don't know if you guys caught this when Mitchell came up here, but you said you are from Nashville, Tennessee, which yeah, doesn't yeah. happen very often anymore, right? It's like such a no, transplant yeah. city now. Yeah, it's crazy. No, we're all of us are from Nashville. Is it weird having me like everyone flock to this place that you like grew up? Is it kind of like is it's, it ruined yeah. or is it better? Like, how do you feel? No, it's, I love the people. I don't like the traffic. Oh yeah, everyone complains about Nashville traffic. So I kind of wanted yeah. to have you start off talking about how you got into music. Yeah, because course. you have this really cool story about how your grandmother was like really high up in the industry. And I just think it's a, like an awesome yeah. thing that everyone needs to know. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, so, and this is my brother, by the way, uh, younger well, brother. Hi. So we we kind of grew up together in in the industry. Our grandmother was president of Sony Publishing for about thirty years, and and she worked her way up from receptionist to president in a time when like that didn't happen. And so I got to see that, and I fell in love with that side of the business. And she introduced me to two uh, songwriters. Um, their names are Bobby Braddock and Carly Putman, and they wrote. He stopped loving her today and countless hits back then. But I remember her introducing me to them as a kid and saying, these are the guys that wrote that song. And I just thought that was the coolest thing in the world. At the time, I didn't really know that artists didn't always write their own songs. They were songwriters. And I remember after that day, I just, I wanted to be a songwriter. I wanted to be like them. And, um, you know, ever since then, I picked up a guitar, started playing and been in different versions, bands to pop bands, the hardcore screaming bands, and then back home to country where I kind of grew up with it. And, you know, use all that influence in there, but it was just a crazy journey growing up in Nashville when it was, you know, one of the, in my best, uh, in my opinion, the best time of country music for a little bit. I imagine that, like, you know, being around Sony in the 90s, you got to see, like, all kinds of, like, of the country, 90s yeah. country stars. Like, Absolutely, yeah. Brooks and Dunn's one of my favorite. And, I mean, kicks would always be hanging out, Ronnie. I mean, we'd always go to parties, and I just didn't realize who they were. We, I mean, I was, like, 10, 11, 12 and, uh, Hang out with the biggest so names cool. in country music. Yeah. Like, I had no idea. Yeah, what cool. would you say, like, was there any, like, one piece of advice that your grandmother gave you, like, about your career that you feel like you've applied now? Yeah, I mean, she, so Pro Tools, it's a, it's a computer program you use to record, and it was, like, just coming out. And when I was a kid, she told me, you need to learn how to play all, your, all the instruments, learn how to record your own music, your own demos. And honestly, that's what helped me get my first publishing deal, because now it's everyone can do all that. And she knew that ahead of time, and... On, without that advice, without me learning that age, I don't, I don't even know if I'd be sitting here today because that, that literally helped me get to so many steps knowing that ahead of time. And uh, I'll, I'm very grateful for that knowledge for sure. Your grandma sounded like she was just like one awesome lady. She was amazing, yes. That's absolutely. so cool. So you've got one of the biggest songs of the summer, Drunk oh, Me. Where did the inspiration for this song come from? Yeah, I mean, I always say it's probably the most true song on the record. Um, it's... You know, it's it comes from that place of when someone breaks your heart and you go to try to drink them off your mind and that just never works out. All of a sudden, a whole new floodgate of emotions is opened up and you're sitting there and wanting to drink more. And I just remember coming in with that idea saying, I want to write a song that while someone might quit drinking, but have that turn, you know. And we couldn't. We had the whole verse written, went quick, all the way down to the end of the chorus. And I remember the last, we could not settle on the hook. And I remember Jordan, We went, he went and grabbed a cup of coffee or something, came back in and he's like, man, drunk me. And there was something so simple about that that makes sense especially it's like drunk me can't get over you and i just fell in love with that song that day we wrote it nailed it like in two hours and then left and then went to pitch it i was thinking somebody else might cut it and then when it came time to make a record it's like man i love this song i want to i want to do it and who knows man we don't know even know what's going on right now. We're just kidding. <laughs> it's so funny that you say you love it because when i ask people i'm like do you like that new mitchell tenpenny song we're like no i love it like um, everyone awesome. we love it so much and you know hearing it at the station um he's gonna play it here in just a few minutes but i wanted to congratulate you tonight your first show in new york city at murphy yeah. lounge and it's sold out that's a huge joke can we get a round of applause yeah, for that thank you yeah, I'm, I can't. I'm so excited. So it should be. It's awesome. going to be a ton of fun. I'm not sure if you know this story, but someone who always talks about Mercury Lounge is Sam yeah. Smith because he oh, played. Wow, yeah. He played Mercury Lounge, and then a year and a half later, he sold out Madison Square Garden, <laughs> and it's like the craziest thing. That which brings crazy. me to my next point. We do this thing called Garden Goals. So okay. every time someone comes up, and we when we know that someday they're going to play Madison Square Garden, and I have <laughs> no doubt that you're going to one day, we have you leave a message for yourself. So I'm going to have you look at oh, that wow. camera that's right up there, oh, <laughs> and I want you to look at message <laughs> Mitchell to Mitchell, like what you would want to say. But, before you take the stage at the world's most famous arena. Oh, man. Mitchell, don't mess up. Don't <laughs> fall down or off the stage. And have fun, man. Enjoy it.
All right, so I will put that in the vault, and then I'll send it to you right before you play oh. the garden, okay? All right, deal. That's hilarious. All right, do you guys want to hear some more music? <laughs> this is Up Close and Country with Mitchell Tenpenny at Hackensack Meridian Health, stage 17. Thank you. Well, I hope one day I do get to see that video again. We'll see. <laughs> um, so like a lot of my songs are written from um, experiences at a bar in Nashville called Losers. Sorry, these guitars... Don't like to travel that much. There we are. So I was sitting there, and I, you know, as a songwriter, you're kind of always just listening to people trying to come up with ideas because we write like every single day if we're in town. And I just remember hearing this really country guy sitting right next to me, and he just like told his buddy, he was just saying goodbye. He's like, "All right, buddy, I'll, I'll call you later." And it sounded like he said, "I'll call you later." And I was like, I wrote it down really quick, and uh, went into the room next day, told them, "That's my hook. I'd love to write this." And, we ended up writing a song called Alcohol You Later. It's silly, but it's been such a fun song for us to play. And um, I don't know, it's just one of those things where it just kind of falls out. So this song's called Alcohol You Later. Number one on my speed dial. Change her name so my friends won't find out They're all heading home now And I got word that she's hanging downtown I know I shouldn't do it Oh, but these shots I'm shooting Make me not give a damn And now it's one more time for one more if that's all right sorry airplanes will dry out so yeah 
yeah, this is this is my first single ever to country radio, and I uh, actually heard on, on our local station, Nash FM, for the first time uh, a couple months ago, and that like was such a full circle moment for me, something I've always dreamed about, and getting to tour the country and getting to play and getting to hear your song and people sing it back all over the country has been the most humbling experience in the world, such a, such a thing that I'm so grateful for, and I just want to thank you guys for having us, for playing the music, for giving a new artist the chance. Uh, I know you don't have to do that, and there's not even a lot of room, and that means a lot to me that y'all have done that. So thank you so much because you're changing our lives. And, um, yeah, it's just crazy. We're just trying to enjoy it all. It's amazing. But I wrote this song about a heartbreak. I want to put a different twist on it, why someone, you know, might not have to stop drinking forever, but just for a little bit to stand a chance of getting over somebody. It's kind of a play off alcohol you later. That's a little bit more fun. But this one's like more serious when it becomes a problem where every time you pick up that bottle, all you do is make another mistake. And, you know, that's what I wanted wanted to do. So this song's called Drunk Me. Yeah. 
guys. Hackensack Meridian Health, stage 17. Keep it going for Mitchell Tenpenny. Thank you guys so much. Thank you again so much for being here today. Thank you to our live studio audience for playing hooky today. Thank you to everyone who tuned in on Facebook Live. Thank you to our friends at Sparkling Ice, Fruity Flavorful Sparkling Water. Make sure you check out Mitchell Tenpenny's EP, which is out now. It's self-titled. Hopefully hear some new music soon. We're yeah, looking forward absolutely. to that. Thanks for watching another Up Close and Country at Hackensack Meridian Health Stage 17.